Hello and welcome to another update video about Ethereum. So the good news is that Ethereum is currently holding this support area and it has a good chance in my opinion, at least if it continues to consolidate, yeah, because that's at least a sign that is currently holding um, support and is holding the range, that it will put another wave five into the upside, another move to the upside, that would be important. Um, to follow the count here, um, what we don't know at this stage, and you know, there is no way of knowing that at the moment, if this last wave to the upside will complete the C wave that we've been waiting for, so that these five waves are already the C wave, the only re it seems quite short compared to the length of the A wave, but the only reason I'm saying that if we take, you know, you can measure a target and calculate a target for a C wave in that we take the um, the length of the A wave and go down to the low of the B wave if it was here or here doesn't really matter too much but we get to a target of around 1230 the first target 1230 and that would be an ideal target for this fifth wave as well yeah so I'm just saying this could be this is the first target for a C wave it's a very short one but in the current condition where also Bitcoin is showing some weakness, I did explain that in yesterday's video, that Bitcoin seems weaker than ETH. Um, and I'm not sure if Bitcoin will make that C wave. Yeah, Ethereum certainly has a good chance if it pushes up in one more wave, I would count this as a C wave, even if it's only reaching the 61.8% extension. A more ideal target would be here around the 1260 level or even all the way up to 1303. That's the 1.618 extension. Depends now how the subwaves develop. Certainly, I would expect one more wave up if, um, well, as long as we're holding this yellow support area, that's based on the ideal target for a fourth wave. So again, just to show you that, if I'll take the, take the length of that third wave, you know, we, we get into the region here between the 23.6% retrace and the 50%, between 12.15 and 12.06, yeah, nearly reached the ideal target and this looks good because from a traditional TA point of view, you would consider this to be a bull flag. And also from a traditional point of view, you would say if a bull flag retraces more than 50%, it's most likely not gonna work out. That's exactly what I'm telling you here from an Elliott wave point of view, that the length of the third wave if you look at the retracement now, this should not come down below the 50% retrace because a wave four would normally not do that. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to put another low in here, um, ideally to 1210 and then go up. That would be the ideal target for a fourth wave. Then we've got our A, B, and now maybe a C wave down. Could also stretch out to the 50%, but at the latest there, it should turn around because if it then drops one more FIP level, we risk cutting into the wave one price range and then it's basically sort of, yeah, getting um, getting into the region of uh, invalidation. And in addition to that, in addition to that, we are, um, we should not drop more than the 50% retracement of the third wave in a fourth wave. And that's basically where we are. And then we could get that one additional leg up. I just gave you an, a possible target. We also can calculate the target for this fifth wave by taking the length of the wave one down here and by adding it to the low of the wave four, let's assume we come down to 12.10, then the target would be around 12.27.70. So that's the one-to-one -one ratio. Um, that's the, certainly the first target and the target could also be 12.38. So that's just if I measure it that way, but certainly there is some confluence around 12.30. In addition to, if I zoom out, you can see that we have here the, um, the trend line, the descending trend line of this channel that is also going to provide some resistance here. Yes, I've got only two touch points up there and the trend lines are obviously to a degree subjective. I also could move it down. I've got, you know, it, again, it's a bit subjective trend lines. So a um, few people ask me, you know, could this be a cup and handle? Yes, certainly this could, it's not very nicely, it's not very, very round. It, it actually, the cup and handle itself looks better on the Bitcoin chart. Um, this is not so round, so I wouldn't really count it as a cup and handle, not an ideal one at least. Um, but yeah, I mean, with with a lot of imagination maybe. But then again, you know, it's it's sort of having here the neckline around that, yeah, 1220 level, but it's not very nicely defined. And then a break above it could, could continue with a C wave, but 
the edit wave count would suggest something different. Um, it would suggest we, suggest we move up in a wave five as long as we're holding the yellow support area. And then we will get the decision down here. That's the next pivot point. Yeah, always important to understand where these these decision points, these pivot points are. Um, we currently have a decision point here, but the main one will come after we put one more wave up in, because then it all comes down to, are we going to hold support here in a wave two support area? Because then we have another chance to put a wave three in, a wave four and a wave five, and that could then lead to a higher C wave. But if we lose key support here, and I will be able to determine that support level as soon as we have a top in place here, if we come down then, um, I will be able to calculate that support range. And if we hold that support range, there will be a good chance for another trade for a wave three. Wave tr um, if you trade Elliott waves, yeah, a good trade to be in is normally a wave three. Now again, I'm not telling you to definitely buy here. It all depends on what we're doing in this support area. It's a bit too early to say that, but trading a wave three can be fairly profitable. At least it can be a good low risk, high reward trade setup because we pull into the support area, you can set your stop loss very close, very tight, and the reward is normally quite good because the wave three is part of an impulse normally, and the wave three can is normally the strongest wave. It normally reaches the 1.618 FIP extension of the first wave. And I made some assumptions here yesterday um, just to show you that again, if we assume we come maybe all the way up to 12.30, let's sec, take the FIP extension to uh, and then go back to maybe down here around 11.93, then we could reach in that third wave, the 12.65 level, and then there would be a fourth wave ideally and another fifth wave. And um, we could get sort of into the region of 1300 in the, let's let's say, more bullish interpretation of this C wave. Again, the C wave can have different length. I gave you some key targets and we need to take it level by level here because this is not a very clear impulse yet. What's evol evolving here? We only have a wave one, we have a wave two, we have a wave three, maybe a fourth wave and a fifth. But what I told you is that this fourth wave doesn't look too bad. It's consolidating and it looks like a bull flag at the moment. So a warning would be if we drop out of this channel to the downside, this small channel, um, that would be a bit of a warning that it might not work out. But really the key threshold here is the 50% FIP retracement. Okay, that's my update about ETH. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.